in a springtime cleaning frenzy, she got rid of all of this stuff that used to be on an open shelf in the bathroom in this space here on three shelves. You can kind of see the lines of the shelves. And here is where she wants me to mount a cabinet that's yet in its two boxes, actually. This is the make and model. And if you're wondering what any of this means, it's probably good morning in Swedish or something close to it. So in this video, I'll build this cabinet and then we'll show you what's involved. And you will see that the amount of volume that this cabinet will hold is going to be enough for this and more. Both of these boxes come with a sign that's got uh, glass or fragile items inside. So handle with care and it says, don't use a knife. So don't, and that means get ready to, get ready to yeah, bust your fingernails off somehow. <laughs> yeah, because that gluing is not giving way. So box number two had the doors in it. The doors are not gonna be blue. This is a plastic film that's on it. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's, you can see the mirrored surface. Otherwise it's reflective. And the other one is looking like this. So no plastic film on the other side. And the European hinges mount, obviously, in the holes over there. So that's box one. Uh, now, let's, that's box two. Now let's dig out the contents from box one. Is this sensibly glued? No. It's, yeah, it's miserable. Why would it be sensibly packaged? Yeah. And the contents of the second box I opened, box number one, are here. The cabinet's back, same coated with the blue film and it's mirror the four pieces that are the cabinet gables, four pieces of glass shelf, a bunch of hardware, the instructions, and when you handle this cabinet, just brace yourself accordingly. This one is uh, 14 kilograms, 30 pounds. This one is 13 kilograms, 28 pounds. So that's the total weight of all of this. And of course, when this is all mounted on the wall, it has to be sturdy enough to bear the weight of all this and the contents that go in it. Now the hardware roughly falls into two groups, the hinge bits and everything else. For mess management purposes here, I wanna start with the hinge and in the uh, assembly manual, that's page 15, just for no particular reasons as far as gone, but it's just mess management, okay? There's nothing wrong with starting on uh, page one and following it step by step, but assembling the hinges into the doors is completely independent of the cabinet gables and everything else. So let's take a look at the hinges first. The hinge screws look like this. It, it's going to go into particle board. Uh, these screw threads need to be sharp. And because it's going into particle board, as you turn the screwdriver, these need to be, of course, sharp, which they are. That's how they are manufactured. And uh, you only have one shot at it. It's really critical because the doors are heavy. Just the doors alone were 13 kilograms, 28 pounds. So uh, six and a half kilograms each. That's why it has so many hinges and so many screws in each holding it. Please, you don't have extra screws in terms of structural strength to the unit. You don't really have, well, five of them will be fine and the sixth one will be crappy and will just be there but not hold anything. That's really not gonna work. You have to get all six screws, two per each hinge, right with enough holding power. So when this is going into the cabinet, this has to be in place 
perfectly fine, perfectly perpendicular to the surface, the hinge being at full depth in the recess and there can be uh, sawdust or debris or whatever in the uh, recess of the round recess of the doors so the strength of these screws are really really critical okay let's see how this one goes on the base plate because in ikea's imaginary world it just goes together like click yeah so let's have a better look because you can't see nearly enough detail on a simplified drawing like this so this is so substandard it's really it's really not helping too many people so what how this one will click together yeah okay well how this one will go together is you have to look at this hook here this is on the hinge this is the base plate obviously the base plate or oh, which way is it going it's gonna make sense in a second okay this is the tail end of the hinge with this spring uh, push plate on it and uh, you see this round feature here that's underneath my thumbnail there uh, these two round pins need to be caught by the hooks like so there so now it's gonna go click with enough force applied to it but just in case it doesn't go click you can just lift you can just push down on the tail and then it goes click so now they are together really solidly so make sure your mirror covered doors don't smash to the ground and you're not fighting it so practice this a little bit uh, while the hinges are uninstalled like this okay so take your time find the hooks look at it there's another screw that's a that's an adjustment screw there don't touch it just yet so put these together put the round pins in the hook it's not gonna just click in place it's too new for that so you have to press this down then it's gonna go click and then it's secure in place solid okay so take your time and get familiar with this how the base plate and the hinge click together okay or couple together there and watch out your nails and whatever so everything is new so it's gonna be a little bit sticking or whatever together so it's gonna be a little bit fiddly i have installed the first hinge here and it went in without an issue ikea says use a screwdriver that's a handheld screwdriver not a power screwdriver so please do that i put it down on flat like this so i can apply pressure on this vertically down that's kind of important. You don't need a whole lot of force, but if you're trying to hold it horizontally between your knees, whatever, it's not gonna work out too well. So the hinges just pop in fairly reasonably easily. I have this sheets underneath and I have these sheets on top as well. And uh, Make sure that they are fully seated, which this one isn't easily. Okay, there we go. Fully seated, and then the screws need just about half a turn or so to lock them in place. So doesn't need over tightening, overpowering, or anything such. And I misspoke, it doesn't go into particle board. It goes into medium density fiber board, but that still doesn't change the point of the story that the hinges need to be installed kind of precisely so pushed in place make sure it's firmly seated properly and then half a turn there with a screwdriver that has a proper tip and isn't damaged etc and pushing vertically down there this way the surface is not going to be marred that's it for the first door good to go for the second one same procedure same situation this is all the hardware from the next pack or last pack this is going to hold the glass shelves threaded studs screws 
it's typical I IKEA hardware. And over here are the cabinet gable pieces. Now, IKEA does say take off the blue vinyl first, but you may not want to. So I left them on the doors until last second, just so they don't get scratched or whatever, just protecting the pieces. So I'm not starting with removing the plastic film. I'm gonna start with installing these brackets. And these brackets are supposed to bear the weight of the entire cabinet, that many pounds and that many kilograms, plus the contents and they only mount with four screws, two on the left and two on the right. So if you get these two or four or four screws wrong, it's a problem if they don't hold enough in this uh, medium density fiberboard furniture piece. Now, this is obviously not glass. It is uh, just laminated with a glossy piece of plastic laminate underneath this blue film so if this falls it's not gonna shatter glass but it's still important that these screws hold the weight of the entire thing and again the same considerations apply the screw threads are sharp but there aren't too many of them there's two four five turns of these screw threads per screw this is sufficient it's that's how it's been manufactured but out of the four you have to get four right holding solid you can't have two solid one whatever and the rest is no 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 you have to get them all four solidly mounted the cabinet gables are not symmetrical look at the whole patterns you're gonna need three horizontal on the bottom this is the bottom and then two there and then none around here this is where the cabinet's back gonna come and the brackets need to go into a set of holes so that this large hole faces the cabinet's back because there is a matching hole there in the cabinet's back so you need to find these two holes and put your bracket and the screws in here so that you end up with this. I'm not using a hand powered screwdriver here. I'm using an actual screwdriver, a screw gun, and I am using a fixed amount of torque, which on this model is torque six to tighten the screws uniformly and gently, just like so. And I'm using the power of the screw gun to push vertically down towards the ground. I'm gonna mount the next two here. So putting on the bracket, I'm using a screw gun and my weight and the clutch on the screw gun to tighten it down but not over tighten it and uh, to make sure that the screws are not just spinning and not advancing make sure they are actually going down nice let's see if more torque will make it less wobbly a little bit there we go that's the right setting for that all right i'm gonna do the same with the threaded studs apply some pressure on it vertically because it only has so many screw threads while holding onto it making sure that it's plumb or vertical both ways this way left and right as well as this way so that's why i'm holding the whole thing together here and going slowly but definitely down same for this one And for the tiny hole, we have the five millimeter IKEA dowel. And I use the handle of that screwdriver. And there, it's in place. All right, so let's take a look what has been done here. 
two of these screw studs go there that will go in the middle that's the top of the cabinet body and that's the bottom of the cabinet body i also went ahead and laid out and also screwed in some of these hinges so where did the hinges go which holes are used here think about it shelf 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 hinge hinge all right which way is the hinge going on this way or this way it can go on either which way think about it uh, this is the end clip here and this is the back of the cabinet so the clip goes towards the back of the cabinet the clip goes facing the back of the cabinet here this way and as usual i'm using pressure to get this mounted or whatever fully seated double checking it clip is at the back so that's that's good news and i'm using actually i'm using the screw gun to apply pressure on it vertically down and some speed there and that one is in place and of course the same for the next one rotate it correctly like so I'm putting it in place or seating it oops and over here at the bottom hinge we've got an extra component here this extra component which is gonna hold the catch that will or this bumper here and that kind of works like this there and it's got some hooks on it the hook will interact with this part like so and that's it that's in yes it will eventually slide out it also has an adjustment screw there plus plus or minus what does it say nothing it just says the brand on it so just leave it there this is staying in place as is lined up that's good enough so for that bottom hinge this is how the components come together yes like so so the bottom hinge doesn't just go into the cabinet's gable just yet it's gonna go in like this same idea grabbing the screw gun and weighing it down there and making sure that's in nice so that's one of them and this is the other so let's have a quick a look at uh, where all this is coming from so those are the threaded screw studs with leaving one hole in the middle open for the dowels this is how the hinges go in press it in place it does not turn it doesn't say to turn the screws with your thumbs at all it's turn it with a screwdriver tip but it does try to say that it has to be seated properly to full depth that's what it's trying to say in all of these images there full depth otherwise the heavy doors are not going to be secure in place uh, same stuff for the bottom hinge and these pieces just click in place with their hooks they kind of click not really and for the last two pieces the cabinet gables or sorry the cabinet bottom and top uh, this is a threaded screw or a screw stud screw stud dowel lock nut lock nut cabinets back so that's how it all goes together so these are the lock nuts that go in place here you have to space it 
with the triangle, with the pointy bit of the triangle pointing towards the hole here. And just press it in place like so. So I'm gonna take a minute and fill these holes with these round nuts like so. All right, so I've got these nuts inside the cabinet top and bottom. The assembly manual says put the wooden dowel in here. It doesn't matter if you put it in there or there. I kind of like to see them together. So which way is it going? This way or this way? You could turn it either which way. Which way is it going? Well, think about it. Uh, the cabinet's back needs to go in. So the cabinet's back has a groove here and here and the two grooves need to face each other so have a look at it it's obvious that this is gonna go together this way and not this way okay because this is not lining up the grooves so up there the components have been just friction fitted like so and on the outside I can go ahead and tighten these like so. A measure, measured amount of torque so they don't get destroyed. So I went ahead and slipped the cabinets back in place so that the large holes will line up with the mounting bracket, that one as well. So at what point do I remove the blue film from it? I left it on because for filming, the reflection is gonna be super, super annoying and distracting. So of course, at home, at your place, you go ahead and remove them first, the first thing before you mount any of the hardware on it. But just for filming, I left the blue sheet on. It's reflective, hello, hello. It's reflective enough as is, but not too distracting. If this was off, it would be really bad. On these screws, as a general rule, IKEA doesn't want people to use power tools because the hardware gets stripped or damaged, destroyed, whatever. I'm gonna show you that if the torque is limited to whatever setting you have, a gentle, sensible torque, it's possible to close the tiny gaps in the cabinet's body with just using a screwdriver, you can see that it turns more. So I can easily exert more torque with the screwdriver there just to uh, close the gaps and to make sure that it's actually fitted together solidly. But I do want to limit the torque sensibly to all of the tiny screws that are so easy to strip out and are so important that they hold 100%. The leftover hardware. Now these ones are covering up the brackets. There's one extra dowel. These ones are for the glass shelves and I wanna leave them last. These are door bumps and will be mounted on the edge of the cabinet somewhere, wherever, so the door closes on it. And let's take a look at the manual. Everything's been installed. Everything's been fitted. It's been slipped in and lined up. And uh, the dowels line up was uh, turned with a screwdriver. So now let's take a look at the mounting of this cabinet. IKEA's idea here is that you hold the cabinet against the wall and with a pencil you make two circles or some kind of cross marks actually on the wall where those holes are. So far so good. And then you grab a screw which is marked like this because IKEA doesn't supply it. So what people grab for screw it can be short and unsubstantial, it can be longer or can be really substantial this is a leg bolt so depending on if you have wooden studs to go through or brickwork or whatever it, it varies what counts as appropriate screw of appropriate diameter and length so anyhow 
you have a screw going through this hockey puck here and for this demo I'm just gonna use I'm just gonna use this screw here and IKEA wants you to leave the head sticking out a bit like that about that much is where you stop with the installation of the screw and then you lift up the cabinet and hang the cabinet on this screw that is sticking out from the wall so this is in the wall wherever with the screw head sticking out that much and so lift up the cabinet and mount the cabinet or hang the cabinet on the screw and then the screw is going to be just sticking out through there yes at which point you grab one of these small clips which is looking like this and and this clip is gonna go yeah like so in place and its top edge will be resting on the top of the bracket that's in the cabinet so once the screw is sticking out through there put this one on top of it and this is resting there and that's it well the problem with this is and then cover everything up and then cover everything up with this plastic snap-on component and walk away hoping that it holds and it will hold the cabinet all right but will this really hold the weight of everything two of these obviously not so this cabinet needs to be mounted not in the drywall but you need to find the studs conveniently i have already marked the studs location with my deluxe stud finder it's a magnet you can see where the studs are in the wall because that's where the screws are to hold the drywall in place and there are more studs in the wall there and there behind the mirror so that's all good and fine but how do you mount the cabinet here with the stud layout not even close to 16 inches on center not even close to the dimensions of those two holes so this is the battle plan the cabinet is also wider than the available space here when installed the cabinet's edge can only come out this much because that this material that lines the there it lines the shower area it ends here so there is a stud running right there and this much will overlap the mirror so how do we do this let me show you what gets done here i'm gonna mount a piece of a wooden board here that will be screwed into the stud here and here and then the cabinet will be with its holes on it wherever so the strip of wood here and another strip of wood here will be thicker than the thickness of the mirror and will ensure that i can run the cabinet past the edge of the mirror without trying to put a screw in the mirror because one hole will be on the glass edge so that's the plan put a furring strip there another furring strip there to fur the cabinet out from the wall and mount the cabinet using the those mounting strips that are in the studs and that's how the cabinet's weight will be distributed over the furring strips
and this is how the installed furring strips look like let's take a look at one two three inch screws are going through the wood through the drywall into the metal stud everything has been pre-drilled installed level at the height where it should be so it's screwed with four screws holding in the studs this part here is extending over here and is not held on by anything else other than this being a wider piece of wood and some of the thickness of the wood has been here removed for the thickness of the mirror there's gonna be a screw going in here and this needed a thickness of wood to hold it can't really be much thinner because that, that screw that goes in there needs to have enough holding power the same story repeat of course here this is even wider you can see that this screw and that spacer same as on that side will line up with this hole and this bracket here and the other one there and then that's how this is gonna be installed except that i'm gonna repeat this on the bottom so i'm gonna drill additional holes ikea never designed in this cabinet because i want four screws to hold the whole cabinet just as there's four screws per each mounting strip so eight screws are holding into the studs solidly and four screws will be holding the cabinet no i'm not gonna teach you how to do woodworking or carpentry or any of this stuff but just mentioning here the key points this screw again is longer going through the wood and through the drywall obviously this cannot be longer than the thickness of the wood because the screw would hit the mirror and break it so that's a shorter screw that's also been ground down on a bench grinder to make it rounded instead of sharp and pointed i have additional spacers from other ikea hardware kits and i'm gonna round up two more of these clips that are this one and this one and i will be drilling additional holes in the cabinet somewhere here and making another hole there same on the other side so ikea designed this cabinet to have only two mounting brackets on it that i find substandard i went ahead and asked community members if they have some spare ones and alas they do it comes with a white cover it is what it is it's better than just having to let me show you how these go together very very straightforward i'm loosening it obviously and then this clip just kind of falls off or whatever like this obviously same on the opposite side the screw has to be sticking out just right about this much and i'll try it put this clip on and let's see if it tightens with just there that's solid so now the cabinet's corner is not moving away from the wall this one i fixed this one is yet to be fastened why these two extra brackets are really important is immediately obvious from here this is why with these ones fully tightened and in place this is how much the cabinet just moves okay so this is not happening for an item with heavy glass doors and glass shelves and small items on the shelves not happening so that's why i'm gonna put the screws back on and uh, see it one more time this is the opposite corner now you have to tighten this enough to close this tiny little gap behind the bracket because there's that white hockey puck there behind it and there now it's been tightened 
there's no need to strip the screw out done snapping the cover plate on the back it is fairly straightforward there it's done i don't want to do all four because i have to take it all apart to remove the plastic film we're almost done one of the last items are these four pieces of these cabinet door bumpers that ikea supplied and this one shows put it on the door i don't like it on the door i like it on the cabinet so when people grab the door especially the one on the bottom here whatever it doesn't get touched doesn't get knocked off whatever so two on the bottom and two up top the glass shelves of which i have two installed only go in with the cabinet doors removed from the cabinet that might be a nuisance but it's actually a safety feature so in the instruction here installation of shelves is step 14 and it shows an even spacing i didn't want even spacing i need to fit the tallest items in here as well so even spacing is not going to work have to work with the height of the items so the glass shelves only go in when both doors are removed and that also means when both doors are mounted the shelves can possibly come out for your safety because they do slide really really easily and it could be easy to uh, knock them out of place so the edges of the doors that are in the way are holding the shelves in place these plastic clips are quite slippery and they also tend to turn so when you put the shelves in whatever they have to be facing obviously at the same height and they need to be pointing in the same direction not like these so take a look at the last design features here these little air charged cushions help close the door softly from about the last 22 degrees yeah this is 45 so this is kind of half of that 22 and a half degrees whatever out for soft closing and my last note here before removing the blue film from everywhere and taking it just about all apart is that the back of the cabinet is gonna be there you can see this gap like this it's a flexible medium density fiber board that's laminated with that mirror finish and there's no spacer behind it even if it's mounted directly on the wall remember i have these furring strips However, there's still a 10 millimeter gap behind it. So unfortunately, this flex is 10 millimeters in and out. It could be stiffened up if I took it off and took it all apart and I might want to do this. Just like the thickness of the, the white mounting spacer that's behind the cabinet for the four corners, if I put a 10 millimeter thick stiffener behind it there's a gap there where my finger goes in so there's space 10 millimeter space is what's needed here right vertically down in the middle to make this flatter better looking whatever because the mirror image needs to be kind of working so you can see yourself whatever in it so that's my last assembly note that it's been designed uh, imperfectly let's just say that thank you very much for watching it's been a long video if you need a hand put it in the comment section below or if you have some ideas or questions whatever and um, yeah i can go over to your place to help so good luck <laughs>